it explode? That's probably the second most asked question for people thinking about remapping. And the first question is actually, what is remapping? <laughs> In other words, sasabog ba yung makina mo? If you remap it, if you listen to Facebook and just rely on groups, there will be people who are telling you, yes, it will explode, it will do this, it will do that, it will destroy your engine. They are all wrong and they are all stupid. And I'll explain to you why that's not the case. Even if we're adding, say, 50, 60, sometimes 90 horses to a turbo diesel engine, it will not cause the engine to explode, break down, or lessen the longevity in any way. Just to show what I mean, that your car will not explode if you remap it, let's Google up the specs of uh, Montero. So the brochure says 179 horsepower and uh, 430 newton meters of torque. Uh, mind you, this is crank horsepower, so when we translate this to real horsepower, we get around 150 to about average real horsepower. Um, the torque we get around 3 newton meters. Now, again, this is measured at the wheels, this is measured at the crank, so you do still get a lot of questions that why are your numbers lower than what the brochure says? It's because precisely that it is in the brochure. The brochure measures horsepower at this point. Our dyno measures horsepower at this point. There, this entire thing is the transmission and then this head associated transmission loss. All of this has weight, needs power to turn, needs power to keep turning. So hence why this almost is always a lower number than this number. If we remap it, say we get around, conservatively get 200 new horsepower. And we get around 500 newton meters torque. So will it explode? No, it will not. Will it put more stress in the engine? No, it also will not. And this is the reason why. You guys have to remember, this is only made at 100% pedal. So foot, this is the pedal. This is a pedal to the floor. Again, this only happens here. And this only happens at 3,500 RPM, nowhere else. So the next question is, how often can you actually do that? Do 100% bottle. I am 1 million percent sure you cannot have 100% bottle straight for two minutes. Impossible in this country. No way, impossible in most countries. And assuming that you go two minutes, how far would you be? 10 kilometers straight, flat out, is home. <laughs> no way you can drive 10 kilometers straight, flat out. It's physically impossible and there is no road in the entire country that will enable you to drive like that. Again, assuming that you do drive for 10 kilometers straight. And hallelujah, great, nothing exploded. Will it lessen the engine life? Also no, because in that one year you travel an average of 10,000 kilometers. 10 kilometers is only 0.001%. There you go. So this is your total shorted engine life by driving flat out for 10 kilometers. And you also have to understand the components themselves, uh, your injectors, your sensors, all of these have a limitation on the voltage in which they operate. Remapping will not get rid of how these things physically operate. So if a map sensor operates on 0 to 5 volts, remapping will not suddenly make it 0 to 12 volts. It's physically impossible. So every sensor in the car, there is a limitation. And then all of these things have to work together. So assuming that you match a do throw 12 volts into the map sensor, you'll not only fry the map sensor, you'll also get a check engine light. And then the PC will have no idea what to do with that kind of input. So no, there are numerous built-in safeties in the car that you cannot exceed what is designed to it. The same way that you can root an iPhone, you can crack an Android, you will make it faster, yes. You will not make the speaker louder than whatever the maximum volume is. Whatever the maximum volume is set, that's it. It will not play the same way as a house speaker. It will not shoot lasers on the screen. It will not suddenly have a hologram display. It does not work like that. So again, remap the software and software is only as good as the hardware it controls. And the engine itself, let's then take, take our Montero engine. 
This is a bit anecdotal. We already know that engine itself is good for 350 wheel horsepower. Boosted. This is with a big turbo, big intercooler, big injectors, etc. etc. Because most engines are designed to have that kind of margin of safety. So if you design an engine for 100 horsepower, in reality, this thing is capable of 250, maybe 270. Then things start to break. And the um, weakest point of any engine is not even the engine block itself, it's the piston and we have the connecting rod. These are the first two things that will break in an engine when you boost it too high. Now we have fine head gasket though. This will start to give way first. And this is pretty cheap. And this is what racing does actually. Racing is to find out what the limitations are of the engine. So you want a 350 horse Montero? We already know the format to do that and we can tell you it will perform pretty reliably. Will you abuse it? Of course you'll abuse it. Will it be a daily driver? Yes, you can drive it every day. But if you're on a 500 horsepower Montero, I don't know what's yet. This is where you start to run into a lot of problems. <laughs> because the more stock components that you change, the more that you mess with it, the more things can go wrong. So back to the initial question, will just remapping destroy your engine? The answer is no. Can remapping destroy your engine? Yes. If the guy who's doing the remapping has no idea what he's doing. Malakas mausok. That's the wrong way of doing it because you're just throwing a lot of fuel into the engine and it's going out unburned. So first things first, you'll definitely destroy. If there is a DPF or some kind of catalytic in your exhaust system, you'll definitely destroy that in the long run. And a host of other things. You don't destroy the engine per se, but the things around it, you will definitely shorten the life because you went to the chief remapper who has no idea what he's doing.